We're ready. It's on. Okay. I guess that's how we're starting, everyone. Welcome to Famous-ish episode five. That is a milestone. Hello, five episodes. Whoop. Only 95 to go. Then what happens? It self-destructs? I don't know. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we're going to keep going after that, of course, but I'm just curious what, you know, that mighty okay. 100. Okay. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Alice. And it's Wayne. And we're here for another episode of the podcast on, we're recording this Tuesday, April 27th. Yes, we are. So how's your week going so far, babe? It's going good. Got the bedroom done, which well, is no, awesome. not done, but we have been working on our relaxation station bedroom. Yes, yes. I'm never going to leave this place. It's very nice. We got um, a new linen duvet cover. So nice. Like, I'm obsessed with linen. This is what this is, babe, by the way. This is linen. Oh, well, no, no, thank you for telling me that. I, I didn't know if you knew there's a difference between a cotton and a, you know, linen or a blend or a poly or a microfiber. I just thought linen meant, like, bed stuff. No, no, no. Because, like, at the hotel, they're like, do you need more linen? No, yeah, it does. It is a general term, but this is an actual linen fabric. Well, I now know how long okay. it takes the sun to rotate the earth. Or the sun to was. rotate the earth, oh babe. <laughs> oh dear. So I do comedy, not street smarts. <laughs> That's just so you know, this is not uh, my yes, so forte. We've been, we've been working on the bedroom and our bathroom. We're doing kind of like, a, I would say, if it was on HGV, it would be a low budget makeover. Yeah, definitely. Because we're reusing a lot of the stuff we have and repurposing. And we invested in paint, which is relatively low cost. And... Just a few random things to improve it. I like it. Poppy colors gives me positive vibes. I will share it with you all on uh, Snapchat and maybe yes. even Instagram story. Oh, so you'll see. I'm a little, a little bit of pressure, but it's an old bathroom. It's been with this house. Our house is 30 years old. I don't think like the vanity has changed since we moved in here. So we just repainted it. We gave the walls a fresh coat of paint. We took down anyone who has a house that was built probably in the 90s knows the bathroom mirror that's like glued to the wall yes you know you have those gigantic super square annoying square mirror that's glued to the wall but we took that down that's like one of the easiest things you can do to update what was that? <laughs> to update your bathroom for Hi. cheap so we put took down that mirror well wayne took down that mirror and just put up a little mirror that we got so that was the one of the things we did that you know, it was a lot easier than the last mirror. Yeah, that's a pretty good update. I like doing that. We also have a really cool—I don't know what you call it—shag carpet. A carpet, yeah, yeah, shag. I guess it's kind of shaggy. I have not had a carpet since. I mean, if you don't count like the ones I used at work, like we've had not had carpet in here. When we first moved in, we had carpet and we ripped it all out because yeah. we got annoyed with it. And the animals just don't make it easy. And allergies. And I don't know. Carpeting in the whole house, we're not gigantic proponents. And then as Jackpot got older and our dogs got older, the carpet never fared well. So we're hoping this one hangs in there with these animals. Yes, please. Yes, please. Talking to you, Opie, on the bed. Well, we had some really windy weather here in Vegas recently. If you can't tell by my nasally allergy voice. I can't breathe. It's just so bad, but... That mirror, Wayne set it outside, waiting for trash day, and of course this mirror falls over and breaks into a million pieces. Yeah, that we was... We should have foreseen that happening. I'm pretty sure that's bad luck. It's extremely bad luck. That's a lot of bad luck. That's seven years bad luck. It's a big mirror. Does it count as more bad luck? I can't afford seven years. I know, I know. Are you generally, would you consider yourself a lucky person, an unlucky person? Do you have any, do you put any weight in the idea of luck? It's all skill. Yeah, so do you don't think luck is generally like anything more than the, the, I think that a, there's some luck involved, you know. Well, I mean, there's certain, luck, I guess it's happenstance, certain. not necessarily an outside luck factor. Well, like with my old job in sales, there's definitely luck involved. Well, yeah, it's luck. You know, right place, right time type. Right, of luck. yeah, right place, right time, exactly. But is it a thing that you actually can harness, or can someone be lucky? Do you think? 
Mm, I don't know. They just they just randomly. You mean like wear the magic necklace? And well, I don't know. Hold the rabbit's people foot. People that are just lucky. I mean, I, it's. I know I'm not lucky. I can well, tell you. I don't know. There's people that are unlucky, yes, yes. like me. But I was trying to think of that. Like, am I truly unlucky or just unlucky at some things? Like, I'm lucky. I have a great family. I'm lucky to have been born into the situation I was. It's also like the paths you choose. I really think that like as I've been good old, been getting older, especially as like an entrepreneur, life is like a choose your own adventure book. Oh yeah. And I have totally been choosing the wrong pages. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is like when you have the path you can choose, the fork in the road. You're diving off the cliff fork instead of the one that takes you to the oasis. <laughs> yeah, go left or right. I end up in the spider web. The, well, hopefully our luck turns around. Yeah, that would be awesome. We I, don't have the lottery here in Vegas. So. We don't have the lottery here. We're not <clears throat> super lucky at the casino. No. There are those people that never played slot machines their entire life, put the $20 in, and then win big. I think that's pretty lucky. Oh, man. Like, never. I mean, I've won some at the casino, but nothing like, you know, substantial. Yeah. Though in my mind, I know it doesn't mean that I'm unlucky and this person is lucky. It's just randomness. The randomness of the universe. I do spill the salt about three times a day. Yeah, so maybe. So I don't know if I'm helping. You're adding to the unlucky. <laughs> you walked under the ladder. Yeah. While Alfie walked past you, a black cat crossed your path. I open the and umbrella then, inside the house all the that's time. That's right. You do that. Part of my You're just live tempting stream it, stick. tempting the luck. I'm just testing it, yeah. But, tempting and testing. hey, our luck's turning around because guess what? What? We got our second dose of the vaccine today. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. We were actually super lucky. We scheduled it the first day it was open to our age group, and it was also open to Camden's age group. We got our appointment super easy, fairly early in the day, scheduled both our appointments, didn't have to fill out anything extra when we went in. They were super fast. They were easy. No nonsense. No mumbo jumbo small talk. It was easy. It was super easy. And I feel good. Just a little sore arm. That's it. Nothing crazy. Yeah, I had a little start, maybe inkling of the sore arm, but took some ibuprofen I think it's fended off, but in the morning, I'm sure, I'm sure I'll feel it. Because actually, I always get sore on vaccine, but it was the second day last time. Yeah, Camden was downright euphoric today. She was so happy. Yeah, she was for a kid that's had a lot of her high school taken away from her. She's pretty excited to just kind of like maybe have some normalcy. She has some friends that also got their second dose of vaccine today, so the excitement is palpable. Yeah, I can see. That. I mean, she's missed so much. I could, I could really see her being. And she's done know. just amazing coping with this. It's not easy for that age group, what they've had to go through this last over a year now, um, and deal with the scope of everything that's going on around them. So, power to Cam, and she did great. And all the other people that have hung in there, everyone's done great. Let's get back to normal. Ready. Well, kind of ready, but almost not. Normalcy. <laughs> Normalcy. I, not that I don't like just hitting around the house all the time. <laughs> uh, Who's hiring? Who's Who wants hiring? to give me yeah, a job a job? No, I don't. I don't want to think about that. <laughs> I don't want to think about this. I like this. I like having you home with me. Yes. Well, I could probably still stay here. Guys, share the podcast. We can be podcasters, maybe. Yeah, that's true. Share the podcast. Sunday. Follow me on Instagram, Wayne Butler Comedy. Yeah, Wayne Butler Comedy. Tell your friends, Cam D. Grams, the daughter. Anything else new with you, hun? Anything new with me? Yeah. I mean, mm, I don't know. You don't know? Is there anything new Anything with me? exciting on the internet? Anything exciting happening? I saw a funny news story that uh, I think is pretty. It's beavers actually chewed through a cable and they knocked out the whole internet for over 900 customers in. Uh, I was going to say 900 people. That's not a gigantic demographic. That's got to be somewhere remote. Still a lot, though. That was in British Columbia. Okay. So that'd be Canada. Yeah, beavers. They just roam around like raccoons up there. I guess. Don't you know, eh? I don't know. I'll be damned. I'll be damned. Everyone said a collective, damn it. Yeah, damn it. <laughs> Everybody, as soon as their cable went, damn, what's going on? Oh, 
have beavers. Beavers are pretty cute. Dad joke. Yeah, that is a built-in dad joke with that story. Life without internet. Actually, British Columbia is beautiful, so I'm sure those people just went outside and soaked in the gorgeous surroundings. I want to go. I do, too. I do want to go, for sure. And and ready. also, the uh, Walden, the third middle school, showed us our, their, their final oh, art drafts. Yeah, everyone who was listening last week, and we were singing the praises of the Walden Middle School art class, we were not overzealous in our praise, because they're... It's cool. Just amazing. It is amazing. I'll be continuing to be posting those yeah, on my Brandon's Instagram story. A lot, and I just hope that these kids know that they did something big for for Wayne. It's really lifted his spirits. Like it is something he's really been talking about and loving. I showing love you me, all. Yes, yeah, showing me all the different things, and he's like, "Look at this one! I can't believe this! Look at this cool thing!" You guys are super talented. I like the little. And caricatures. I can't thank you enough. The little Wayne caricatures. I like how the people have interpreted you differently. You know. Yes. Your features and your mannerisms. They, you can see them in the little pictures. I seem to be doing stand-up comedy in all of them. Yeah, I get. Well, you're a comedian, or you've self-proclaimed comedian. I mean, I've done stand up, but you know, <laughs> was never headliner or anything. Well, I mean, we are sitting here right now with microphones. We could we do stand up. We kind of look stand up y a little bit, except I'm sitting on a bed. You are laying up. Lay, yeah. lay up. I'm, I'm lounge up. Lounge up. <laughs> yeah, I'm lounging. I'm definitely lounging now. I'm a little tired. So we like stand up comedy, but we prefer to sit down. Yes, exactly. I would do stand up, but not too lazy. <laughs> Exactly. Opie agrees. He's laying on the bed here with us. Yeah, he loves hanging out during the podcast. He's very sweet. He's very sweet. Sweet boy. Oh, man. You know what? You remember I was talking about how I think about embarrassing things I've done like years in the past? Okay. Like they haunt me. Like they randomly pop into my oh, head. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So at the end of last week's podcast, I don't know if any of you caught it, but I just... Ref- Flexively said, like, love ya or love you or something at the end. Love mm, you, bye. You I know what I mean? That. Yeah. Oh my God. And then I thought about it afterwards and I like cringed thinking about it because I'm like, well, you know, that's kind of strange, I guess. A lot of people say they love the people on the internet and I, I appreciate these people, I like them. But love, it's a strong word. I mean, we've all done it. If you say, you know, I love you a lot. Which thank yeah, you. Yeah, I love that, you when you way. say bye. Uh, Although I guess maybe I should think about it this way. Probably half of our podcast listeners are my actual immediate family members. We love you. So I love you guys. I love you, Mom, Dad, Grace, Diane, Anthony. Anyone else who's listening from my family. Yes. Maybe that was meant for them. But I made me think about like those moments where either like you're ordering pizza or something and you accidentally say like I love you. Bye. Or oh anything God. like that ever happened to you? Yeah, I, I did it to my boss once. Oh. Like, it was funny. We were on the phone, and he was telling me something. And, you know, I talked to you so much Yeah. when I was on the road. I talked to you so much that, like, you know, it was just part of me to say that at the end. And when we were done with our conversation, I was like, I love you. And he was like, uh, I love you too. <laughs> he didn't know what to say. <laughs> Thanks for the words. Man. It was the best. I was like, oh, amazing. Did you ever do it to like your teacher or, you know, like your teacher where you accidentally call your teacher mom? Did you ever do that? I don't know if I ever called my teacher mom. Maybe. Maybe. No, like, Ma, I swear, I feel like that must have been common. Because I accidentally called my teacher Mom before, and you just die inside. Uh, maybe I have. I don't know. I'm curious if anyone else did that. That's like saying thank or you like to the waiter. Or, like, your teacher your pet's name. Yeah. Call your sister, your brother, your pet. You know, like, you always, I don't know. Or when the server gives you the food, and, you know, they, and they say, enjoy your food, and you're like, thanks, you too. <laughs> you know, and yeah, they're like, uh, okay, I will. Yeah. That's a big one. Yeah, those are kind of, I guess, big ones. Those are big things. I'm curious if anyone else has these things. Or you have that moment that you've thought about then later. Like, dang, why did I say that? Did those people think I was weird? Oh, my God. I hate myself. 
You, they probably didn't even notice. That's they a probably, thing. You don't think like, they went and said, you know what? Alice said she loved us today. I feel special. It's it's like having a pimple. You know, like when I have a pimple, it's like everybody can see this. It's the biggest like thing yeah, in the world. It's true. Oh, my God. <laughs> and like literally everybody's like, I didn't even know you had one until I you know. said it. Everything, you know, everything is such a big deal when you say in your mind. Yeah. Like today. In my mind, okay, I'm going to say, today I wore jeans for the first time in over a year. And it was fabulous. And it felt weird. Like, I felt weirdly dressed up. And it's jeans. I wore jeans and, like, a t-shirt that wasn't stained or just baggy or threadbare. That was the most dressed up I've seen you in a while. It was. I was wearing a t-shirt and jeans. And I felt like people would be looking at me and thinking I was overdressed. Or trying to be stylish or something. Oh, you are just... Isn't that a weird... I don't know if anyone else gets clothes. that. I know anyone else gets that social anxiety where you think you can't wear something because it's like to not you. Or people will think you are looking strange. Or is there any like trendy clothes, you know, that are a trend and you're like, I like this trend. I would love this trend, but I think people would look at me strangely wearing this trend. I don't think Camden feels that. Camden absolutely she does literally not just feel wears it. everything. She will rock any trend. Yeah, Camden will literally take every trend and she can look good rocking it. Yeah. It's just unfair. I mean, she can literally every outfit. I mean, it's ridiculous. It Un- ridiculous. It's unfair. Oh, you know what? Speaking of luck or unluckiness, anyways, so lately I've been trying, there's an app, Nike has an app called the Sneakers app. It's where they release all their shoes and you can enter draws for these things. And back before your birthday, I thought, okay, I'm going to try to get Wayne a pair of Jordans. What? I know. Okay, I'm going to spoil, there's no surprise. There's no surprise because spoiler alert, I never got lucky on the draw. I have never had a pair of Jordans I, I know, in my life. I know, I know you never had a pair of Jordans. You know what I, I had? I knew you would like Jordans. In seventh grade? Reebok Closest pumps. thing that I had were they Reebok pumps? to Jordans were the Shaquille O'Neal's. Oh. I had the Shaquille O'Neal's, the Shaq's. And I don't know okay. if that was like the Kmart version. Were they That's the just Shaq my parents were cheap Reebok asses. Pump. Didn't he have but, a Reebok pump? <laughs> there were pumps. Anyways, yes. Yes. Any, those were cool. But I've never owned a pair of Jordans. I know. Okay, so way back before, actually, I think even before Christmas. Sorry, Mom. Yeah. Way back before Christmas, I started <laughs> signing up. I'd set up my notification. I followed the Twitter accounts that would tell you when the Jordans were dropping, the low top and the high top and all the different colors. And so you go on the app and you enter a draw. You put in your size, you enter the draw, and if your name gets whatever, then you get the sneakers. Anyways, I've entered I don't know how many since then, babe. But you still have to pay for them, right? You have to pay for them, yeah. It's getting a chance to buy them. Wow. I've never once. I mean, I'll be, I'll be cool with some 90s Jordans. I'm all, you know. Well, I'm not going to be able to afford you some 90s Jordans. I might be able to get you some some replicas at this point but anyways i thought that's the thought that count and i thought man jordans are cool that would i was thinking man i might really like cool. some low top jordans but then would i feel just really weird trying to rock jordans now this is true now this is something i can actually get behind like i don't know you know jordans i've been worn converse my whole life yeah. i got married I in converse cool. yeah I, I just don't... Jordans, I might be able to pull off. I think you could, but then I'm thinking, well, I've tried for low, lows. I've tried for the high tops. I've tried for all of them. I've tried for special ones. But anyway, so if I, I got friends. you Jordans, would you like low top, high top? I'd probably do high tops. You had the high top ones? Yeah, but I had friends uh, that I worked with that would actually wait in line for like seven hours yeah. for a pair of, you know expensive jordans yeah or i mean they're not like the thing were. is if you get them at the original retail price which is what i'm trying to do they're not that bad really for nice leather shoes How if much? you get like a hundred and between 120 and 160 oh that's not bad i thought it was more no like this is if you're originally getting the jordan at original price the reason we think there's so much more is because people resell them for insane amounts uh... anyways so that's my thing i I thought, no, oh, I gotta try. I almost thought about putting in for my size before too, because I don't know if your men's size is just so popular that it's harder to get. Got a Anyways. lot of size twelve basketball players out there, huh? I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, I've been trying to get. If anyone has 
some tips, but yeah, if you have any getting Jordan's thought, tips, but then let I me actually, know. I still did it today. I tried to get you a pair because I go, okay, Father's Day is coming up. I could still try to get you one, but then this yesterday you were like, I don't need any more shoes. I'm not getting any more shoes. Yesterday you said that. I did say that, like right. That's so funny that I had no idea that you were trying to get me Jordans. That's total surprise. Well, yeah. total surprise. I don't even know what I would do. I would like open it and be like, what? That's like something I've always wanted. And I just know. Never, I don't know if I couldn't anyway, afford it so or funny. I just never was. I've been trying for months with no luck. I might have to look into replicas. Well, thank you. They have some pretty good reps out there. But anyways. I'm not wearing a replica. What if I don't tell you it's a replica? I'm not wearing Hordens. <laughs> anyways so yes those are like things the trends i thought i thought you would look cool in jordans but i don't even know what you think about jordans i've always wanted some oh uh, well i'm still looking then low key back can... in my charlotte hornet starter jacket days yeah there's cool ones there's really cool i, I don't know if there's some. a certain color you wouldn't wear but there's colors i've tried for oranges and greens and reds and blacks and all of them oh you know i i think there was a time that i could have gotten jordans but do you remember when these shoes were popular, I know we're going back to the 90s again, the, the Reebok black white striped Reeboks, they were the rage the high top. in my high school. They were low top. Low top. They were the absolute rage. Um, I'd have to find a picture to show you. You might. So they had stripes? They were the Reeboks, not Adidas? I believe they were striped. No, definitely Reebok. Um, but they were so popular. Like everybody was wearing them. Oh, man. I had to have them. I remember the Reeboks that had the little twisted leather side that showed a different color through. Reebok men's classic nylon. Okay. They were like, uh, they were the coolest shoes that I've ever owned, honestly. And they're super comfortable. They're cool. They're cool. They were, everybody had them. Like, you just had to have them to be somebody in my little ass town in Texas. And you were somebody then. I was somebody. You were somebody. Oh, man, there was so much stuff about the 90s that we didn't cover on our nostalgia episode. This is true. How is there so much? Could we, we probably could have a podcast that is all 90s nostalgia all the time. Easy. Because you asked a lot of people what their 90s experiences were and what their different takes were on it. And some things jarred your memory. I got so many... Uh requests or actually like people you know sending so much input from everyone so input, what so yeah. give me one tell me who said it what they said uh cassette tapes oh yeah cassette we didn't tapes. even talk about cassette tapes and we, more yeah, importantly we would... rewinding them with a how would you rewind a cassette tape yeah if the if the tape came out of it you had to manually rewind it with a pencil or pen yes yes and oh, sometimes man, it, you just lost it your tape when your cassette player eats your yeah Freaking tape. That's what over. a rip off. It's over. It is over. Cassettes were a whole different thing. When you actually just went and bought a cassette single that had like the single and maybe one other song in that little cardboard sleeve. I, yeah, I remember. Uh, those were really big at Walmart. Yeah. SWV. I know I had. Um, Dr. Dre. We had Millie Vanilli. I'm pretty sure we had like the Ice, Ice Baby one. On just the sing- singles, they were they were only like a dollar or maybe a dollar ninety nine. They weren't expensive. Were they? I feel like three ninety nine for the single. No, for I mean that was like the only thing I could afford. So I know they were like a dollar. Oh, I was really? getting five dollars a week for my chores. Five dollars, five dollar. I was a baller. You were a baller. So I could afford my my dollar ninety nine cassette single. Yes, it was one song. Yeah, one song is sometimes there were two. Sometimes, Sometimes there were two. two. Yeah. I feel like you either you had one and then you turned it over and there was another one. Oh gosh, freaking turning over a tape! How weird. And also, well, we did talk about VHS because we talked about rewinding. Yeah. What What did someone say? Read the name and tell me what they wrote. What? What did they respond? To? KW Track Eleven said Kelly Kapowski. Oh god! Oh my Kelly Kapowski! Kelly! Every girl wanted to be Kelly Kapowski. And every guy wanted Kelly Kapowski. Yeah, pretty much. And Kelly, Kelly, I like the name Kelly. I like Kelly's hair. I like Kelly's, you know, she would wear the like, little shorts under a skirt. I like Kelly's style. But you liked Zach Morris, didn't I you? was in love with Zach Morris, like in love with him. 
He's such a horrible person. He's well, yeah. Now that you actually character watch. is not someone I'd be like, "Hey, come date my daughter." For yeah. sure. But I had the Zach Morris poster that was the insert in like Teen Bop or something. I like had it on my wall taped. I remember that magazine. Zach Morris, I mean, he's an attractive person. Mark Paul Gosler was Mark Paul Gosler. Yeah. Oh, that was Joel Ashrodom. Thank you for the cassette tape. Uh, yes, jogging the memory. There we go. Let's see. MC Hammer Pants. I never wore those. MC Jaja 17369. Never wore the MC Hammer Pants. I think my mom... I don't think I personally wore them, but I think my mom made my older sister a pair of like purple lame type MC Hammer Pants. Can those, you see those her rocking those? I could actually see that. Yeah, she definitely. Them back. Definitely. They, people, see them. they bring them back. They call them like harem pants now, and they're like for yoga. And there was uh, Vanilla Ice also rocked those, right? Oh, those yeah, yeah. baggy MC Hammer yes, type very pants. Very baggy. If you put them in a breathable fabric, they're for yoga. Okay, now Outdoor Anthro said something that was actually, I can't believe I missed this because this was a huge part of my childhood. Pogs. Pogs. I played Pogs every I'm sure day. At the end of, I guess, when Pogs, I was in middle school, so I guess it would have been really early 90s. But I guess by the end of everyone's middle school, school career, Pogs had to be outlawed at their school. Well, it was gambling. It was absolutely it's 100% gambling. gambling uh, and, and you would lose. You know, your favorite thing, your favorite pogs. Your favorite pog. Do Sometimes you, you would gain yes. some really cool ones, though. But do you remember going, I feel like it was like Hot Topic or those type of stores. And in the glass case, they'd have like the, what were the giant pogs called? The big ones. Your shooter, your... Slammers. Slammers. Slammers were what you would use to knock the pogs over. Yes. Did everyone have, I feel like it was very popular to have a slammer with a yin yang symbol on it. Yes. Is that like just generic? It's like the one that came with all of them. Really? A yin yang symbol or like the psychedelic eight ball. I have the eight ball. Eight ball. Or like, or you go to the zoomies and they have the marijuana leaf pog and you're like, ooh, what's that? I might have had that. I had a Dragon Ball Z one. It was like the Dragon Ball Z. uh, I forgot what it is, but the, the thing is, they're, they're like little cylinder cardboard discs, if you guys don't know what yeah. they are. And they have like a cool design on them or yeah, a cartoon. Like, yeah, packs of Pogs. So like for the little Pogs, you'd buy packs of them. They were sold in little card, you know, like the card packs. And then the Slammers were like the bigger, more rubbery, thicker discs. Mine were metal. Your shooters. Or like at least a hard, hard slammers. plastic. Yeah, the Slammers. And yeah, hard, hard You'd find somebody at school that also had pogs, and you would challenge them. Yeah. And you guys would put your pogs in so a, a circle, on top, stack them. Right. You would stack them on top of each other. Yeah. You would stack them like you stack, you know, poker chips. And then you would take the slammer, and you would hit the, the front of yeah. the pogs as fast as basically as hard as you can and whatever ones flipped over the other you know side. Was it always flipped over you got or was to it keep outside those. a circle. I mean, that's the way we did it. Huh, we stacked them and we slammed them. more pogs than me. And when you stack them, they're upside down. You know, they're, yeah. there's no picture. Oh, right. And whatever one's flipped over oh, with the picture showing, starting to bring back memories, yeah. then you would you would take those. And, and those so, would be yours to keep forever. And you'd be like, bro, lie. Jim, I, could, I just stole your Ninja Turtle. Yeah, you could get, lose all your pogs. And they'd be like, come on, let's play again. Yeah, because oh, you could lose all your pogs. No wonder it was outlawed. I guarantee it got outlawed at our school. Actually, I know it did. Well, another thing that was really big at uh, our school was pencil fighting. I don't know if you ever did pencil fighting. but it's like where you hold the pencil and yes. then you flick the pencil down in the middle. Exactly. One person would hold the, yeah. the pencil. Uh, with both hands and the other person would try to like flick the pencil and break their pencil yeah. and it was number two pencils were like indestructible you there, no, there wasn't <laughs> a number two what is that pencil that's got like kind of the weird different wood is that a different kind of number two i don't know but it was like you know, like, you, you lost all your pencils one. i would always be pencilless but then you get your knuckles hit at school you get your knuckles hit yes i'm pretty sure they would have found on this too uh, that I got it did actually get out loud in our school because we didn't have pencils to do our work because we were <laughs> pencil fighting at lunch. Uh, pencils. I, you know what was popular in our middle school too, and I wonder if they still do it now. Painting your fingernails with whiteout. 
Uh, yeah, I remember that. I think that was a skater thing for sure. Was it skater? Paint, it was yeah. everyone thing. I actually pierced my fingernail with an earring. Oh, you're so hardcore. Yeah, I had an earring in my pinky. How long were your fingernails? Long enough to put an earring in them. <laughs> I'm looking at my fingernails, fingernails and they're not super long. It was all the rage, man. How that did was we cool. ever learn anything? Obviously, you didn't learn anything. This is the time when you should have been learning about, like, the Earth's rotation and the Earth going around the sun. I was too and busy instead, piercing my fingernail. You were piercing your fingernail. Oh, babe. And, you know, dyeing my hair with Kool Aid. That was big, too. Kool Aid. Did you do it with the Kool Aid? You mix Kool Aid with Crisco? Never. That's what, for some reason, okay, we did that. The Kool Aid, you mixed it with Crisco, and then that was like the binder for your head. I suppose it'd be a lot easier if you did it with like conditioner. But for some reason, I feel like it was Crisco. I just did it with a packet of Kool Aid and water. It didn't last very long. Well, that would be that's not good. You need something to hold it on the the hair and get it into the follicles. I didn't research it. You didn't research. Well, there was. We didn't exactly have cell phones at that time. I basically threw some Kool Aid and some water and threw it in my hair and it looked really bad. Like I went swimming in chlorine. <laughs> and it lasted about a day, and that's it. Yeah, that was it. Then we got manic panic. Things yeah, got easier. Manic panic. Another thing they sold in that little case of Hot Topic. I don't think I even went to Hot Topic when I was a kid. If I didn't know the name of it anyway, really? when I was in school, I don't know if we ha- didn't have we one. We drove or- from our small town. My mom, my mom was pretty dang cool. Like we grew up in a small town with no shopping, but she'd take us to the next larger town. It was a city over, like forty minutes away, thirty five minutes away, and we go to the mall, and we go around to the Zoomies and the Hot Topic and the Spencers and all the clothing shops. And do our shopping there. I just don't remember if we had Hot Topic. I know we had, you know, like... Was it? I feel like it was Hot Topic. Virgin Records. Maybe it was... Suncoast Zoomies. movies. Stuff like that. But I don't know. Oh, I could you know, be going wrong. going to the mall, my sister mentioned... My younger sister, Grace, mentioned this. KB Toys. Yes. KB Toys. KB With that Toys. that little thing, that little corral of yipping dogs oh my god battery powered dogs that was always by the front <laughs> <Always. laughs> oh my god literally just all over and yes. over and over and over and, and over. all like turned over on their sides yipping i had those um across from me at work and it was the most annoying thing in the oh, world I, that'd be terrible just, like, all day and i was like can you just turn that off like nobody's gonna buy it so just turn it off you know, so they had the little yipping dogs. They had that little, like, ferret chasing a ball thing around. Oh, yeah. That would always be there. They changed that to, like, a ferret in a paper bag. Oh, really? But it was the same thing. You know what they also had? Do you remember these things? I remember seeing these, like, at KB Toys or Spencer's. Moonies. Do you remember? Are, are those the shoes? No, Mooney. Do you think about what a Mooney? Do you remember what that is? And this mm. is a thing that's just not popular anymore. It was a suction cup thing that went on your car window remember suction cup things i do remember that yeah so it was a person just the back of them but they have like their hands and their pants and you like did like a little air power air squeezy thing and it made them moon it made them pull their pants oh off. my god yes i feel i feel like that's they literally mooned. mooned yes so they mooned your pa- the passing car yeah I remember those. I feel like it's Moonies. I really, I don't know what they were called, but I do remember those, and those were. And I, I think I had one or two. They were funny. About it. Uh, every time we went to the toy store, or Spencer's. Yeah, those were hilarious. Or whatever. Those were hilarious. I bet you still get those. I have to look Spencers. up Moonies, but those suction cup animals on car windows. Where have they gone? Garfield. Yes, Garfield. Everybody had a Garfield. A little Garfield. Yeah. What happened to these things? Everyone uh, has tinted windows. You can't see them anymore. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. And the car window signs. Out of style. Out of style. Suction cup animals. I guess it would obstruct your vision slightly. Yeah. You might. That's people, what I was thinking. Maybe. People also might not like getting mooned by a stuff, <laughs> strange little thing. I would totally buy one of those if I could find one. How about we, we put one on our window. We face it towards our annoying neighbor. And every time she's outside. I'll just moon her. No, we'll get in trouble for that. For but real. we could have a little doll mooner. <laughs> Anyways, KB was great. Those, uh, the little dancing flowers to the music. Oh, yeah. I had a Coca Cola can. I was going to say, and the dancing flowers. I had a Coca Cola can. can that did it, and it would, like, dance. Yeah. Now they have a uh, Groot. 
Yeah, the group. The Epstein the Dancing group. But you, And you push every single one to all do it at the same time. Yeah. Or any of those battery-powered toys. That's who what I do that? during Christmas. Yeah. Who did that at the toy store? You get every battery-powered toy, and you push every button on it. And you get the whole shelf going. <laughs> They're all going off at the same yeah. time. I do that at Christmas time we all the time. We still Just rolling down the aisle. <laughs> It's it's amazing. It's hilarious. And then everybody's looking at you like, really, dude? You're 40. <laughs> well, we you're, like to have You're fun. in your 30s. I was probably... You gotta in. have some fun. Yeah. I got a dad joke. Okay. I got a dad joke. All right. Let's see if you can let's make her laugh. Let's see if we can make her laugh. Why doesn't James Bond fart in bed? Because he is... Um, <laughs> I don't know why. Because it would blow his cover. Ah, uh, that's clever. That's actually clever. Ha 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 ha! That was ah, ah. That's funny. Okay, now I don't remember. Like, I don't. Nobody gave me this idea, but this is something that I remember, and I used to always buy this novelty at the toy store. Do you remember that game that was like? filled with water and you had to get the rings yes on the it, stands yeah i was just gonna say yes it's kind of vertical you do the bubbles the bubbles blow the little rings up onto a little thing those were so fun they were you fun. just push the button so simple you know we didn't have cell phones those back types then, of so. games and then also <laughs> the ones there were a lot of those little fidget games where you have the maze with the metal ball you have to get the little metal balls <sighs> to stick in the hole the stupid turn it around and try yeah. to get the ball in the hole and um, like those puzzles the puzzles where you slide the squares all of those oh yeah the the puzzle picture picture puzzle one right where yeah you make where a picture you, yeah you have to move the squares around until they get the picture these are things they just don't exist anymore and also i don't know i think this is still around but the view master I really like that. Oh yeah, Viewmaster. Where you stick the disc. It's still in it. around. It's still around. I think. I had an issue with the Viewmaster because of my focal length or something. <laughs> but you know what? Another one was. Did you ever do this one? Oh, there's two of these. These are the things like my mom would pick up for me when I was sick. You remember that? I feel like it was called. I don't know. You had this sheet of paper, and then it had it had a dark sheet of paper, and then it had kind of like a waxy sheet of paper above it. Yeah. On a piece of cardboard, and you had a little red plastic pen or instrument, and you drew on it. And then you slid then it you to erase it, it. You pulled it up you pulled to it erase up. it, and it would then you redo it again. Totally remember that. It's a little cardboard, and it had a little slit for the it's pen. It's called the magic something. Yeah. I'd... They also had the one that was like you would draw, and then to erase it, you would slide the thing yeah. over from yeah, left to right. Yeah, there's that one. And then also in that same area, they had Mr. Wooly. What was he called? Wooly Head. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that? Where you have the little magnet pen. The mustache. So it's, it's a guy with like iron shavings or alum- I don't know, some sort of metallic yeah. Whatever magnetic shavings in a little plastic thing. It's like this guy's face, and you take the magnetic pencil and you draw, you drag the little shavings around his head, and you make his head hair really big, or you give him a beard. Those were so fun. But, you know, that was actually we talked about the, the uh, truck stops. That was also yes. always in the truck stops. Truck Both stops of those, or like that little area at the front of the grocery store by the magazines. Yeah. And the word searches. Those would be there. I had a Flintstones one. Really? They had like Mr. Willie ones, but they had like started doing cartoons like Jetsons, Flintstones. It was kind of fun giving Fred Flintstone a mohawk. And those are it was literally fun. just Fred Flintstone. That I remember that. That's actually a fun thing. Yeah, it was fun. I Ew. liked that. I liked that one. And flip books. Flip books were like a lot flip of fun. Books. Yeah, yeah. You, you would flip the book and it would be a cartoon. Yeah, I do like flip books. Man, there's some people that make some crazy talented flip books still nowadays. Yeah, that's more power to them. I can't. Make a viral video. I would just do the stick figure bouncing the ball. So my younger sister, she told me something that was such an integral part of our young childhood. And I want to see if it's the same for you. Because not everyone had the same experience. Because we only got like three or four TV channels um, where we lived. So how about watching actual infomercials as entertainment? Did you watch the infomercials that were on? 
I did, yeah. You did. So every kid in the 90s basically got stuck watching infomercials. Like not actual commercials, yeah, infomercials. The infomercials, the long running commercial where they show you the product or they are, you know, they're selling you something. I actually know every word to the country western CD one. The country hits of the 70s, you know, down in a West Texas town of El Paso. <laughs> yes, I, I fell in love with the Mexico. <laughs> Abilene, <laughs> Abilene, I'm on the road again. Yes. So I can't wait to get and back. It was favorites, literally just. And more of your favorites, <laughs> like, you know, and then it'd go into. And if you want to know, the credit card, the next 30 seconds, you'll get a free. Yes, yeah. always something free. There's definitely were tier levels amazing. of infomercials. Uh, I was you know, I watched Gomer Pyle and Three Stooges at like three in the morning. That, was that's say, when you would get those. It was like Sundays where we lived. Sundays, all that was on was infomercials, and then late at night, early morning infomercials. I liked them. I there were some that we watched. There were some that my younger sister and I like recreated, like we pretended to be infomercial people. Yeah, that. I mean, I I did it. For a living. Yeah, well, that's true. You I grew was up to do it. So maybe you were man. watching Ron Popeil or whatever. And that could be it. George Foreman saying, hey, I want to be a pitch man. Oh, my God. The George Foreman grill is amazing. George Foreman grill. Yes. George Foreman grill. The rotisserie. What was the rotisserie? Okay. The Ron Popeil rotisserie chicken. He I had remember a that. Dehydrator I and remember, rotisserie. Um, the, the music ones are the ones that come there to were, mind. Okay. So they're. The types of infomercials, there were the music ones, the music compilations, and those aren't terrible. You had the worst ones, the infomercials were the worst ones, were like the religious Oh, wait, what ones. about Miss Cleo? Miss Cleo! That's yes. Miss Cleo. That was such a, you know, psychic lines. How crazy. That was a psychic line. Oh, man, that was always on. There was the self-improvement one. So you had the ones that did your hair. So you had the spray on hair. You had like the topsy tail hair ponytail thing, Bowflex. Oh, bo- Bowflex, of course. So, of course. You know, when when I was a kid, like nowadays, kids can get recognition doing pretty much anything. You can do a TikTok, you can dance in front of the camera. In order for me to get recognition, I had to order mail, and my parents hated it. I would get you have another Bowflex catalog. <laughs> I would always not you just, just really watch these infomercials. Mail with your name on it. Yes, but I also ordered these the catalogs, the free. When I heard the word free, I ordered it. I just immediately, like I had so many ridiculous, you know, Tony Little, <laughs> Step Master. My mom was just like, okay, listen, you know. You know what I did once? I don't know if I told this already, but I liked that too. I liked sending in the things too. But one time, I ordered. I accidentally subscribed to like Disney Book Cut Club. Uh oh. Like I accidentally signed up for something that she had to cancel and I think pay for. That's expensive. Well, I don't I don't know how many books. I maybe signed up for the one where you get like, you know, it was kinda like Columbia House. Which I did the is another same thing, thing like that. For too. Columbia House. I was just gonna say that. I did the same thing. Columbia House was a stupid I was like, they're only a penny. I love Columbia House back in the day. But there yeah, I signed up I think for Disney Book Club. I got the free book and she had to go through all the trouble of canceling it. Oh. How miserable. And it's not like you just go sign on the internet and cancel. It was so, yeah, it was a lot more difficult back then. Yeah. And it was easy to sign up, but hard to get out of. I know, but yeah. Watching infomercials for entertainment. And 1 800 numbers. Not 1 900 numbers. We had those two. But 1 800 numbers, there was one. um, I just like, you know, I was a weird kid. I had imaginary friends. I know I did. Johnny was one of my friends. (laughs) But I had. To just like talk to someone, uh, the Kool Aid Man had like a one eight hundred number. Uh, you can call the one eight hundred number. You talk to the Kool Aid Man. You would actually answer. You know. What the like heck? Anything. How come I never called the Kool Aid Man? I don't know. I, you're missing out. But I don't remember. It, it just. I just remember calling uh, from a payphone by Seven Eleven. I never did it at home. It was a payphone by Seven Eleven. I would call like the Kool Aid Man, the free one eight hundred number. Oh wow! Uh, you would send sticker packs. We get st- free sticker packs. Well, you, Kool-Aid had a whole point system where it was basically buy more and then you could turn in your points for Kool-Aid swag. Yes. Do you remember that? Yes. You yes. take your Kool-Aid packet and those little 25 cent or 10 cent Kool-Aid packet had like one point. And then you get the big jug. 
that a wasn't tub the, of Kool Aid, and it was like worth five points. I totally remember that. That was a horrible Kool Aid man I did, by the way. That was like Mr. T and Kool Aid man. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad. I, it, oh yeah, there you yeah. go. There's a Kool Aid man. You send your Kool Aid points in for a Kool Aid jug. Oh man, you know that reminds me of that reminds me of going door to door to win the the bicycle. I never got past that stupid Tootsie Roll bank, but you know uh, fundraiser for school. Oh yeah, you sell more and then you get the better prize. And you know we had bicycles, we had jackets, and I always Did- got. Was that a consolation prize that I'm just now finding out about that Tootsie Roll piggy bank? Probably That's all I every ever kid got. That sold that, but did you have where your school? If you sold a certain amount, like they got to go in like a cash booth. Oh, yeah. Like the air cash booth or something. I, I don't think we had that. Okay. We I were too like cheap at my school. I feel like this existed maybe when I was in middle school or high school possibly. But like if they sold enough, they got to go in the cash grab air thingy. Maybe when we got to the cookies. Maybe. The cookies that you sold and the freaking candy bars. I was totally Beavis and Butthead, by the way. Like I got a box of candy bars and I ate half of them. So then what? Your mom just had to buy candy bars? Yeah, pretty that much. That you already ate? Yeah, uh, mom. You know, uh, the oh school. my gosh. 20, I can imagine 28 28 bucks. not happy about that because those candy bars aren't really on the affordable side. Like a $6 Butterfinger. Eeks. But uh, I, I do remember eating uh, 100 grand, lots of 100 grands. Ugh. Sorry, I just can't with these fundraisers. What a racket. <laughs> Let's breaking fund the schools so you don't have to put parents and children through these horrible fundraisers ever again. But think about how easy it is now with like the square system and everything. Like oh, it's, yeah. before I had to get everybody to fill out all the information, give me their number, and hope that it goes through. Yeah, send you a know. check. You have your little envelope full of checks. Yeah, the checks. Money. Oh, man. Yeah, now you could just be like, here, look, it's a GoFundMe. Give me some money if you want. You can literally just swipe it on their phone. Thank you. Here you go. Well, there's been times Sign here. You, know, you, get pre- it is, you get pressured for your kid to sell enough, and you're like, okay, I guess I'm buying eight rolls of this overpriced wrapping paper. Oh, man. Or you remember three, that? five tubs of cookie dough. Remember when we had so much cookie dough in Camden? Cookie Zone? dough she and She really churros. wanted to get to the level. Yeah. They really prey on these kids who are like first grade. She was so kindergarten, young. and they really want to get to sell ten items, and you get this thing. Oh, you freaking like, uh, man! I'm that, sorry. I let's pl- just plastic let's ruler. Just fun things for the schools instead of making people spend their. You know what's worse money. than that is the arcade freaking gifts that you get when you get tickets. Send t- oh, yeah! Oh, ten thousand tickets. Here's a sticky hand. Yes, yeah, sticky hand and some smarties. A sticky head had some smarties. Maybe if you had like a thousand tickets, you could get a blow up hammer. Oh, yeah, exactly. You know, or a blow up pencil. It's so <laughs> funny to me. It's like 50,000 tickets or 500,000 tickets. You get this same exact thing you can buy at Walmart for yeah. $10. Yeah, the giant inflatable crayon that cost less than $5 at Walmart is the <laughs> biggest prize at the arcade. It just made you feel good. Like, I won something. I did this, you know. Ski ball champion. <laughs> yeah. And you realize you spent $50 on a rubber ducky. <laughs> My parents did. Yeah, things were different back then. We're talking about Columbia House and, like, mail ordering CDs. But nowadays, MTV doesn't even play music. You said someone brought that up. Yeah, it's. I remember when the music just stopped happening. And MTV was great when it was just music and it had like TRL with Carson Daly. Yeah, the countdown. And, you know, the that's when Eminem right, first came out. I remember it was just awesome. And of it course, before then. The thing is, it wasn't always just music because they had Real World, they had Road Rules, they had um, the dating one. My favorite show, Undressed. Oh. Oh, Undressed is literally the worst television, <laughs> worst TV show ever. That was as close to, like, you know what I mean? Singled Out. Singled Out. They had Singled Ooh. Out. How Chris terrible Hardwick. is this show? Oh, bad. I'm it sorry, was bad. This is not good. And they had MTV Spring Break. Um, Beavis and Butthead was was cool. That, then yeah, that, Beavis they and had, Butthead. They um, had music videos and Beavis and Butthead at least. Yeah. But when there was a time where it was literally music television. And I, they even had liquid television, which was so cool. It was like that cartoon. Yeah. It was it was different in the 90s. But so was everything else. Nickelodeon was way different. You know? Yes, way different. Uh, one of my favorite things in the world. And I would stay up 
late at night with my sister when she was in high school, and we'd watch Nick at Night, oh, which see. was actual like classic 50s TV yeah. shows, Donna Reed, Dobie Gillis, from, uh, and we just would stay up all night and watch those. And that happened like after 7 o'clock. And then, I don't know why and who decided to do this, they switched it to like Roseanne. And Full House. And Full House. Like That's yeah. not Nick at Night. See, we didn't get any channel. We didn't get cable channels, so we only watched it when we were over at my grandma's. It was just so much better when it was actual classic TV, well, you know. And that but... they're saying that that's classic TV now, and I'm just old and fine. But Roseanne is not classic. TV. Well, Roseanne should never. Have and I've never, any TV. I never liked Roseanne. <laughs> no one should have ever watched Roseanne. Not good. I was a Wonder Years kind of guy. Well, I mean, Full House I can watch. Roseanne I can't. I, I, I can't say that I hated Roseanne I'd probably have to watch it again Roseanne. I can say that probably ever I'm probably passed down from my parents my parents hated Roseanne they just didn't like it they didn't like her I just don't think they liked it no uh-huh. didn't find it funny it was on everybody loves Raymond yes, guess, every- guess what everybody does not love Raymond right Alice we don't love Raymond I don't love Raymond <laughs> I always switch it I always did back in the day did you sit through Raymond I I don't I think I ever watched an episode like uh, willingly. Yeah, I mean it didn't hold a candle to the other shows like Seinfeld. I wasn't a huge fan of Home Improvement either, and no. a lot of people loved it. No. they loved Home Improvement. Yes. Tim Allen, but I just never really got into it. I never. Well, it played up, you know, masculine stereotype behavior. Yeah. Which I don't really find. My super. dad loved it. Yeah, it's kind of that Tools. type of stuff. JTT, that's where you got to start. Like, I mean, JTT, very cute. I was, he was in my age demographic back then. I also had a tiger beat, maybe with some JTT in it. Simba. Yeah, I guess he's. A, oh, oh, he's snoring over there. Speaking of our little Simba. Aww. He's snoring. Can you get your microphone up to him and maybe we can hear it? He stopped. He left, no. it, he left us hanging. Yeah, sorry. I'll do it for you. He, he was snoring. It was so <laughs> cute. I could hear him over this. He's snoring over there? You know what? Remember I was talking about speaking of music. I was talking about Rolling Stone. I had a subscription to Rolling Stone, and I couldn't think of the other music magazine, like the big format. Did you figure it out? It was Spin. Spin. Do you remember Spin magazine? I do remember Spin, Yeah. And it was good too. Yeah, I remember spinning. At my room was covered with Rolling Stone covers and Spin covers. That's another thing, magazines. Yes, your magazines and your whole wall is papered with these magazine covers and things out of the magazine. Yep, yep, magazines uh, and the ads that came with them, the movie posters that were just inside. And yes. words like your whole wall was a collage. Like you cut out just a word that said like "wasted" and you put it on your wall. That was so fun. Nintendo Power. Nintendo Power. I was a big Nintendo you Power. You could not guy. get through some video games without Nintendo Power. No, Just that like was... nowadays, you can't get through some video games without looking up the whole playthrough. YouTube. Walk yeah, through. like now there's Boom. a walk through the playthrough, but you know, remember Super Mario Three, and you've got the card house. Oh my god. The moving card house, and you have to match things. Nintendo Power. Nintendo Power had a layout of every single combination of the card house. Yeah. And they're like, okay, always start with top right or something because this one has the least options. So if you get Fire Flower, you only have two options. Yeah, we, we played that recently. We literally just Googled it and it was exactly yes, pictured was, what is what. Exactly. You will not miss one. My, my sisters and I, we had a Nintendo Power Club. We had our own little club of three. Oh, wow. And we would meet and talk about Nintendo games. I think... Don't know. I'm pretty sure there was a president, vice president, secretary. Wow. Yeah, so we'd sit and look through the monthly Nintendo Power and try to beat the video games. Did you guys have a Game Genie? No. You didn't have a Game Genie? We could not be. We were not cheaters. I mean, uh, oh, yeah, okay. It's cheating. It's cheating. (laughs) (laughs) I'll try to backtrack. No, it's cheating, I guess. It's, It's codes. We were not into that. We were not I had that. a Game Genie, and I used the hell out of it. But I maybe wasn't playing the games Game Genie, Game Genied. What were the games? Yeah, you didn't need a Game Genie for Mario. So was there a code for Ninja Turtle Dam? 
What is that called? Oh, that's the hardest freaking it Nintendo so game of all time. Hard. The original. What's it called? Ninja Not Turtles. Of, what is it called? Something Dam. What's the What's it called? Ninja Turtles Return to the Dam. What the name of the game? The game. It's yeah. just Ninja Turtles. You're talking about no, in the, when you're under the water trying to oh, yeah, but it's, take apart the bombs? It's just the name of it. Yes, that part. You're swimming underwater, running out of air, and you're trying to get rid of the bombs, the electric fences. That was so hard. Oh, my gosh. I have, like, flashbacks of being stressed out and probably <laughs> us all yelling at each other, like, no. It's it's really difficult, uh, that game just in general. and uh, It's so funny if you watch, like, Angry Video Game Nerd or something, watching him play it, it brings back a lot that of was memories. hard. So which turtle did you sacrifice first? You know how they all have their life meter and you switch Raphael. between turtles. You, I didn't like Raphael. You did. And his thing was too too. I sacrificed small, Michelangelo. You know? Michelangelo wasn't horrible. The best one, well, even that. though his movement was slow, you know, like his actual like motion, but um, Donatello. Yeah, because he had that long ass Because he bow. had, you could push it down and it was long, but he was slower on the repeat, I believe. You could literally sit on top of a thing and just hit Bebop yes. in the head. Yeah, Or exactly. rock steady. Hit rock steady in the head over and over. I don't remember. Yeah, so Bebop you had to steady. always try to refill your Donatello first. And then you'd, you'd uh, pizza. You'd find pizza to yeah. get your power, and you could turn back to Michelangelo. Yeah, so you switch your between your characters, but it is a difficult game. That Super damn fun, though. is so hard. Yeah, that was... I haven't played it in over, I don't know, probably almost 30 years. Probably 30 years. I wonder if I'd be terrible at it. You play it on the computer. I can't. I have a hard time with that. I have a hard time with emulators and controls. It would be a lot harder. I need like the old school. Is it on the Nintendo Classic? I don't know. No, it's not. Huh. No, you don't. Man, Ninja Shell games were good though. That's what they need to make. They need to make a, a classic that has like all those real hard, obsolete games, like the Home Alone games that were absolutely horrible. See, I never played those, but yeah, they were hard. Horrible and hard. All Even Nintendo the games were hard. hard. Even just the Simpsons. Simpsons game was hard. Bart versus the Space Mutants. Yeah, was like one of the first games I owned on Nintendo, and I freaking like spray painting freaking aliens, yes. different colors, spray uh. painting fire hydrants. I don't even remember what what happened. Bart versus the world. All those Simpsons games were so hard. Beavis and Butthead. I don't know if that was Nintendo, but that Nintendo was Nintendo so was hard. Things are so much harder when you can't save. Yeah. And restart. No, you have to literally start over from the beginning. I know. And I, I I was up one time with my brother. We stayed up until, you know, one o'clock in the morning, probably. No, this was different. Yeah, we stayed up to like one o'clock in the morning and we were playing Ghosts and Goblins, which is one of the hardest games of all time with no saves or anything. And, you know, your Nintendo gets really hot, but we can't turn it off. We got to go to bed. Yeah. We can't turn it off. My, my mom comes in the next morning and says, you guys need to clean the room. And we're playing the game again that we didn't turn off the whole night before. And she's, uh, we're like, okay, just right after this. And she literally just hits the uh, button. Clean your room. And I swear, right? we both had heart attacks. Yeah, you'd be upset. Like, are you serious? Like that was three like weeks of drawing. gaming. Like, imagine if you tore up your kid's drawing that they worked all day on. Yeah, because well, they didn't Is clean their room. I know, but like that would be similar. I feel bad. It's just, they don't know. I don't think my mother knew. What she had done. Well, it's different. It's different. Like, that generation is, it, we walked bu- uphill both ways to school in the snow and blah, blah, blah. And we're like, we had to play video games without save. Yeah. <laughs> but see. Life was so hard for us. We had to play video games without the save. But us parents are the same now with kids that can't stop because oh, yeah. they're playing an online game and you're like, clean your room. And they're like, hold on, I can't stop right now. And you don't understand. You're like, ah! and that that's like the opposite, exact opposite of what we were going through. But I mean, I don't Camden know. can't pause her game. I know, but we're not really like that. No, we're not like that at all. But I'm just saying like, if this was the same scenario with my mom, Yes. You know, but I just remember I could think that's something that stays with you a long time. I was probably like nine years old. I agree. And I, I that... remember her shutting off a game that my brother and I spent just ridiculous amounts I, of time to get to the end. I don't know. That's hard for me because I do equate that to being like ripping up a drawing or ruining us, yeah. pushing over a sand castle or something, you know, or stepping on their Legos. That's something they worked hard on. They were. Yeah. But who knows? 
She was a mean mom. No, she wasn't. I'm just She's kidding. a good mom. She's coming to visit in a month. No, Come honestly, on. I really don't think she knew what she was doing. Well, yeah, you wouldn't. You probably wouldn't even assume that anything bad happened. You don't talk back to your kid, your parents. You don't. You know, you just you don't. Cleaned your room. I should have cleaned my room. Instead of like, I can't make excuses for this. Stacking everything on your bed and putting it underneath the comforter or something. I bet you did that. I put everything under the bed. Oh, you put it under the bed. Under the bed, and then my dad got to the point where he would take a broom and sweep under the bed Ugh. and pull everything out and go. All right, we'll do Is it again. Is that why you clean like that nowadays? I you clean literally with a broom. take a broom and you sweep up the crap that's all over the floor, including things that need to just be picked up, like shoes. I put everything in a pile. He piles it in with the garbage. It makes everything it. easier if you just take everything, you know, in the room and sweep it up in a big pile <laughs> and then pick out the things that you don't want. Maybe something you got from and removing everything under the bed with a broom. Also, if the room's dirty, I usually, if it's really dirty, I put everything on top of the bed. First. You do do that, so I, I can so. get around, and then I—it's—it's it's just how I work, yo. But it works. It a little bit. It works. Did you ever do this? You're eating, uh, you know, you're making a sandwich, bologna and cheese, and you throw some Doritos on it. I don't like bologna, but I love Lay's on a sandwich, regular Lay's. Regular Lay's. You know I love Lay's. Yes. I love them on a sandwich. And in fact, in college, this wasn't the 90s, it's the early 2000s, but when you're broke, you buy a loaf of bread, you buy a jar of pickles, and you buy some chips, and that's your sandwich. It is so good. Just pickles and Yeah, chips. like a spear, a pickle spear on a piece of Wonder Bread with a bunch of crushed up Lay's. Wow. And it's good. You don't have to... You no only mayo have to have or anything? The, nothing else. Wow. It's like a little wrap. A I kind of want one of those right now. Pickled chip wrap. It sounds pretty good. That's good, huh? Sounds really good. Camden loved when she was young. I used to make her turkey sandwiches with Doritos on them. Yes. Oh, you know what she used to eat really too? Really good with Doritos and Lay's. I don't know if you did that. She ate peanut butter and jelly with Doritos. She got that for me. Do you do that? She got that for me. I think that's I just too weird. I taught her all these strange things that she eats. I like peanut butter, just peanut butter and Lay's. Peanut butter, jelly, and Doritos. It's really good. Ugh. And Lay's. Yeah, I just like, I'm not a jelly and person, ruffles. but just peanut butter with Lay's. Oh, or Ruffles. Oh, Ruffles on a tuna sandwich. Oh. oh, that sounds really good. You're making me hungry and I already eat dinner. I know, I'm getting hungry too. I need a bunch of snacks already. <laughs> that sounds good. I'm going to have to tuna tomorrow. We don't even have bread anymore. We're not allowed to have we bread. We have a wrap. We have wraps. A wrap, a peanut butter and jelly wrap? Yeah, or no pickle and chip wrap. We don't have chips either. Oh, okay, yeah. So, no, never mind. You can just eat a pickle. That might work. Just enjoy your pickle. Pickles and ranch. Yeah, that's good. I like pickles and ranch. You like actually just pickle juice. Dip it in the ranch. Pickle juice is good, yeah? Is this something that people did? I didn't know it was a thing that was, like, generational. What, pickle juice? No, chips on a sandwich. I thought everyone did that. No, like, uh, it's there's a lot of people that are like, what? What? Well, try it. If you haven't tried it and you like chips and you like sandwiches. It's like french fries on a hamburger. You know, I always did that. No. Put the french fries I actually on disagree. the hamburger. Yucky. But I did that in school. I don't want a mushy potato f- on my hamburger. To, in my defense, I didn't do it at like McDonald's. I did it at school. Oh, so you could finish your food in time? Where? Well, no. Just because, you know, it's soybean burger. Not the greatest thing in the world. But you put some like five... French fries on it, ketchup, mayonnaise. It just made it. It was good. Uh, it worked. It worked. I guess if the fries were terrible and the burger was terrible, it couldn't make it worse. But I never, I had a friend that would always do that at McDonald's. We would go to McDonald's and he would like, the first thing he would do is open his bun and put the French fries on his burger and uh, his father-in-law would always get so mad at him. I don't think I would like that. Don't do that. You're wasting money. Well, I mean, I don't know if you're wasting money, but, like, I just don't see how that can be the optimal fry crispiness. I think it's good. McDonald's fries, especially, like, really nice, you know, McDonald's I just, fries. just give me a McDonald's fry, 100%, 95% coated in ranch. Do you never take a person. bite? Yeah, I know, 100%. But do you ever take a bite of your burger and then throw, like, three or four french fries in your mouth at the same time? No, no. I will, I, like, kind of eat them separately. Actually, usually I eat my fries first. Because they're not good after a little bit. 
Yeah, no, that. I go like this. You can watch my hand. You Kenny can watch, or Wayne can watch my hand. It goes in like a claw, and I go into the fry thing, and I take clamp like five fries, and then I dip them in the whole thing, and then I eat them. There's a reason they come together. I don't think they're supposed to go together. Oh, that's so much better that way. Take a bite of your burger, and then while you're chewing, throw some fries in your mouth with the ranch if you so you know. So literally it. just. Put it all together because it's going the same place. I think I need the specific taste to enjoy it. No, I like it all it's mixed up. Yumminess. You do do that a lot with a lot of your food. You'll mix up food on your plate. Yeah. Ugh. I make casseroles out of yeah, everything. Yeah, you just will mix me. things up before tasting the things I make him. He'll just mix it up with something else. And add ranch. Yeah, <laughs> you did that early, especially when we first were married. He used to make you, you did so that mad. every every single thing I made. He added ranch before even taking a bite i don't add ranch anymore no you don't you stopped doing it you stopped adding supplementing uh, before uh, tasting it was it. a habit you know it was what i did so well i'm i'm glad you don't do anymore i might still do salt before tasting though well there's sometimes because i don't taste tons when cooking there's sometimes i under salt yeah yeah well, I can't believe we can talk about the 90s. It seems like forever now. There's even more we didn't touch on. So, so easy. eventually we'll have the 90s revisited or we might plan out or do tier list or something like that. Yeah. So how are you feeling now? It's what time is it? Six, seven? It's like eight hours since we got our vaccine. How are you feeling, Wayne? I feel fine. I feel good. Just Other than just getting a little, a little tired. Arm. I'm getting a little tired. I'm a little uh, foggy. A little foggy. If you can't tell, but also like uh, I just drank a soda, so you know. Caffeine. That makes you foggy. That makes me less foggy. No, oh, that's what I'm saying. It's like a little better oh. now because of so. The are you? Do you think you're going to be too tired to do your walking tonight? No. Yeah. If you guys, we are so close to the end of the month. We only have three more days, and uh, Wayne has. There's a hundred dollars on the line. Hundred dollars on the line. Will you make it to a hundred miles? Yep. I'm gonna get Super Mario. I mean, uh, Luigi's Mansion. Ooh. What Luigi's Mansion for the Switch. What else are you going to get? Save it for something else good? Get whatever you want? Yeah, probably. Some candy? No, I can't have candy. You could get candy if it's something I don't like. S- no. Or you could just stick with it. I could literally eat a box of those Red Hots in about five seconds. I know. That's the issue with candy, isn't it? That is the issue with candy. Well, how fun. So we're all... So everyone... This is talking about this again. This is my list. We've been doing this since the start of April. 30 days in April, three days left. We decided to all have a group challenge in the house. Whoever hits 100 miles this month on the treadmill gets 100 bucks. And I think we're all going to do it. I've already did it, and I've already basically spent my money because I bought some knitting patterns. I bought some other random stuff for the house. So, But I... Currently, I'm at 108.28. I know. That's awesome. And I, I kind of have some goals for the this month and next month, but I don't know if I want to speak them into existence, but maybe I will later. That's crazy. Um, you're at 91 and a half. You haven't done it today, though. 91 and a half? Yeah. That's crazy. So you only have... So after today, I'll be at 95. Yeah, you're, you're a set. You basically have, including today, four days left, and you only have to do eight and a half miles. I got this. You do got this, babe. I am so proud of Might you. Might actually take today off. <laughs> you could take today <laughs> off. And Thank then you. Camden you. is at ninety two point one four. She's killing it too. Show She's off. gonna do it. Amazing. Everybody's doing. Everyone's super doing good. good. This morning, I decided. Well, I kind of halfway through this month decided that I wanted to average four miles a day average for this month. So one hundred twenty miles, I wanted to get to. And so this morning, I realized I had to catch up on some miles. So this morning before the vaccine, I did like Uh-oh. five and a half miles. Yeah, and right before your vaccine. Right before the vaccine. And I kind of lost track of time because I was just trying to do it. And I was trying to do this treadmill challenge where they give you a little magnet or something if you complete a certain number of workouts in the month. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to do a couple of these. I got done. I'm like, I'm so hot. I'm so sweaty. I'm going to look like a crazy person at this vaccine. You were super red. I was so red. And they took the temperature with a little temperature gun. I'm thinking, what if my temperature is so <laughs> high that they won't give me this vaccine? I didn't even think about that. Because I get, like, I'm one of those people who's extremely fair skin. 
it gets bright tomato red whenever I do anything. It was terrifying. You did it. I had that little nervousness there because I was hot and I was already having kind of like a, have the mask on. And I was still hot. You made it. I he made didn't. It. I, I don't even remember. Oh yeah, he did take my temperature. Yeah, he did. I guess I'm good then. And Wayne almost lost his card. I gave everyone their card and we got out of the, the car before we checked in and Wayne put it somewhere and he almost didn't get it. I didn't it. almost lose it. You I forgot. Okay, you put it away. In my, you know, put it deep in my pocket. Yeah, though, my arm today feels less sore than at this point last three weeks ago. Yeah, no, the first day it didn't really bother me. The second day is when it like was like, hey, what's up? Yeah. Hey, what's up? I'm here. You just yeah. got vaccinated. Just I'm, a, remember. I'm excited to still feel that tomorrow. I know it's going to be hardcore tomorrow. Yes. Drink your water. Maybe take some ibuprofen. I'm drinking lots of water. Before you go to bed. I could do that too, yeah. Well, I hope everyone is... Um, I know it's shouldn't be controversial, but it's controversial. But please protect yourself and the people around you by getting vaccinated. Yes. It is the only hope for things to get back to normal in any timely fashion. I really, I don't even understand why people, it kind of blows my mind that, that some of the comments. It I've blows my mind, but your content is not for these people. If they're unfollowing you because of this, they don't deserve to see the content. Like, but what? If you live in the United States, your area is open to you to get vaccinated. Get vaccinated. If you're above 16. So please go do it. I could not even stress if you get it through CVS, it was super easy. Not sponsored by CVS, but my, my parents got it at Walgreens. They had an easy, they had an easy time doing it too. But if you're given the opportunity to do it, do it. It is so worth it. Just that peace of mind that you won't have this affecting you because a lot of people's lives and probably many of you people, you know someone who lost her life or life was gravely affected by this. So this is our chance to stop it. This is our chance to maybe get back to normal. Yeah. So. Excited to get back out there. I'm not, but I'm excited <laughs> to have the idea that it could get back for people who want it. The way you said that. I'm not. Well, I'm a, I am a little bit of a recluse type personality. Yeah. But I do want people to be able to go do the things they want to do. If Even if I don't want to go to a bar and party, I want people to be able to safely go to a bar and go do these things. Yeah, definitely. So I'm hoping that everyone takes this seriously. I'm hoping that people know that everyone they know probably or most of the people they listen to on the internet or look up to are doing this so they can do their part too by doing this and be part of the crew. We're Pfizer gang. Pfizer gang? Pfizer gang. Did that, do the other ones have a thing? Do they call it like Moderna crew? Oh, man. J&J &J and the hizzy. <laughs> we have like a, our different vaccine gangs. I don't know. I could maybe rock a shirt. Maybe. That says it. Crew. Gang gang. I like it. I, I'm hyped about it. Throwing up peace signs. Yep. Yo. Yes. I guess you gotta make a little <laughs> hand sign. Anyways, so that is it. I think we're fairly tired now. Going to turn in a little bit early, watch our King of the Hill. Uh, yeah, yeah, my brain's not working as well as it, it was not... 10 minutes ago. Last week, was it working really well? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, on that note, I need to get Kenny or Wayne a workbook. She keeps calling me Kenny. Who's I'm Kenny? Sorry, who's Kenny? I Who is this Kenny Wayne guy? A workbook on uh, grade school science. If you guys don't know, my real name is actually Kenny. Wayne is my middle name. Yes. Don't ask. Spoiler alert. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thanks. Have a good one. You're awesome. Love ya. Love ya. Love ya.